So the biggest mistake that people make when they buy a piece of land is not doing their homework, not doing their due diligence, as I call it. Of course, you gotta make sure the flood zone, you gotta make sure there's a survey on the property, but there's just more to it than that. Because the last thing you wanna do is buy a piece of land only to find out that something else is moving in right next door. Now, you always hear me say walk the property, but there's more to just walking a property and getting the survey and finding out the flood zone. So what if the piece of property that you absolutely fell in love with, the piece of property that you purchased, and by the way, when you walk your property, make sure you got plenty of bug spray on. But when you purchase the property, you gotta know and make sure that what's gonna go in next, because what's gonna happen if you buy the property and then all of a sudden you find out there's an apartment complex coming in right next door. Now there's a lot of things that help your property value and there's a lot of things that hurt your property value. When it comes to things like a fire department or a fire hall, police department, what about a storage unit? What about a gravel or a sand pit where there's dump trucks constantly? See, those are what they call functional obsolences. Those are things that you can't control and they don't help your property, they hurt your property. And of course, like any land, you wanna make sure that you're not restricted to what you can and can't build. See, a lot of times you'll wanna purchase a piece of land, you find it, it's five acres, it's beautiful, but they say that you've gotta build a minimum of a 2,400 square foot home. Now, who sets those restrictions is quite simple. It's the previous owner of the property because oftentimes the previous owner of the property set those restrictions because they may live close by or close proximity and they wanna make sure that whoever goes in close to them or next to them builds a comparable house just like theirs. Now look, that's not a bad thing because you gotta consider if they want a house built just like theirs, perhaps they're taking into consideration that they wanna keep everything cohesive within the area. So that makes property values continue to increase. But you always gotta know that if you buy a vacant piece of land, there's no guarantee what's gonna come in next. Now, of course, what we see most all around the country that goes in when you buy a piece of property is a subdivision. You buy a piece of land, you think it's a great piece of property, and then all of a sudden, they drop in a subdivision. You just found out that the 100 and 200 acres right next to you has been purchased, and they're gonna be putting houses on quarter acre, half acre lots. Now, that's not always a bad thing, but you gotta know that when you buy a piece of land, you want the peace, you want the privacy, you want the tranquility. When they put in a subdivision, you're naturally gonna have more traffic. But with that are gonna come a lot of commercial amenities, which helps your property value. Now, how this helps your property value is quite simple. When you have amenities that are within a close proximity, say five to seven minutes, 10 minutes away from you, like grocery stores, gas stations, shopping centers, anything such as that, when you have a convenience, it increases property value. Have you ever noticed how land that's way out in the country is less per acre than land that's within five to seven minutes of a grocery store or gas stations or any kind of amenities. So how do you find out all this stuff? How do you know what's gonna be going in? Well, you gotta do a little research and you've got to talk with the neighbors. It's okay to get out and communicate with the neighbors. There's a little app that I use, it's called Land Glide. Land Guide will show you who owns the land. It's an app on your phone and it will show you the owner of that land. Now, once you get the owner of that land, you can go to another website called Spokio, S-P-O-K-E-O.com. Spokio is another really inexpensive site that you can go to, and you can search that address or the person's name or both, and it will give you their contact information. So if you don't wanna just walk up and knock on someone's door, you can use LandGlide and Spokio to simply try to make a phone call to them. So another thing that you'll wanna make sure of is that you don't have any easements on the property. In other words, there's no servitudes or easements on the property. No one has the right to cross your property to get to their property. You see, you always hear me say location, 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 but it's also resale, resale, resale. Regardless of where you think you're gonna live forever, life happens, it kicks in sometimes, and you may have to sell the property. And where you think it's okay that there's a servitude or an easement on that property, the next buyer, they may not want that. So think of it this way. Anytime there's something with the property, such as an easement or encumbrance, a restriction, something that just makes it a little bit less desirable. Every time you have those little things that add up that make that property less desirable, it's gonna decrease your property value every time. So besides getting out and talking with the neighbors, you'll also wanna get with a good real estate agent. You gotta have an agent that's working for you and that's on your side. Most people don't realize that 
you don't pay a real estate agent to work for you and to benefit you. You see, real estate agents are paid by the listing brokerage company. When a property is listed for sale, that homeowner agrees to pay the listing brokerage. And the listing brokerage places the property in what they call the MLS, the Realtor Database. They've had this for years. They used to print the big, thick MLS books when I first started in the business 28 years ago. Now everything's on a website. You see it on Realtor.com and Zillow. But when it's placed on the market, the real estate brokerage company that has it listed tells any real estate agent, if you bring a buyer for our property that you represent, we'll pay you a portion of the commission that the seller's paying us. So you see, it benefits you greatly to have an agent working for you, and it doesn't cost you anything monetarily out of pocket. Now, if you don't have an agent, we can certainly connect you with an agent, regardless of what city, state that you're in. We've got agents all around the country. And quite simply, a good agent can help you with the process of knowing what's going on with the land. So they can show you most recent sales. They can show you what's been sold. They can show you also who owns what property because as real estate agents, real estate brokers, we have access to homeowners information. We have access to all that data through the tax records in the MLS right at our fingertips. Now, what you can also do is do a little research and find out, okay, properties that have sold, you can also check with city and county records to see, have there been any permits pulled? Has there been any request to build any subdivisions? You see, when you go to build a commercial dwelling or any subdivisions or any large thing like that on a piece of land, you got to get permission. If it's not in city limits, you've still got to get permission with the county or the parish that the property's in. Now, if you're going to be building a house on the property, what I've had some people do, and I've had family members do this, they'll buy a piece of land and they'll put a single wide home on the property. Yes, a single wide trailer, if you will, where they bring it in on wheels and they set it up and they use that as a temporary house until they get their house built. However, you've got to make sure within the restrictive covenants that you can actually do that. Because the last thing you want to do is to have to backpedal after you bought a property and ask for forgiveness or a variance, if you will, to do such as a trailer before you build your house. So look, buying a piece of land can be a lot of fun. The purpose of the video is to educate you so you know as much as possible, so you can be as comfortable as possible. I find that knowledge and education takes down and takes away that fear. Once you take away the fear, you build confidence and you feel better about yourself. You ask the right questions and you're not as concerned. And most importantly, you're not as stressed.